Hey, hey, hey. So I am, I actually did this update yesterday and then I decided that it was before I went to my uh, OB, GYN, I always say OB appointment, but that's pregnancy. So anyway, uh, so I have time today. I'm actually prepping dinner. Um, I always pre-cook dinner because I work evenings most of the time and we work out in the evenings so then when we get home dinner's ready. So I'm going to do this. So if I'm not looking at directly at the camera, that's why I'm multitasking. Uh, so anyway, so I had my in-laws left. I'm trying to remember what I said yesterday's video when I filmed this the first time. Uh, my in-laws and them all left on Saturday. I did not have time to update because we were kind of just catching up on cleaning the house and, um, I don't even know what all we did. Um, my husband graduated the academy on Monday and, um, yeah, and then I worked Monday, and Tuesday was my uh, first appointment. Thank God I made that appointment. Um, I made that just to have an annual exam. Um, right when our insurance kicked in on August 1st, I made that appointment. Thank God I did because he is the one that had to order all of my blood work since our clinic is three hours away, and it's in a different state. Um, we're in Maine, and it's in Massachusetts. Um, and I actually have to have my monitoring, which I think I mentioned in one of my other videos. I have to have my monitoring done in New Hampshire. So, because it's a little bit closer than Massachusetts, um, that office. So anyway, so I had my um, consult while they were here. Um, it was over the phone. Super nice guy. Um, he's kind of, he seemed kind of down to earth. He kind of could tell that like I've been through this a time or two or three, and this will be our fourth round. Um, the thing that really stunk is they do blood work on day two, three, or four, but because, um, I had my appointment with him on my day three. I didn't get the paperwork till day four, and I probably could have had the blood work done. However, they just send you a script, and then your OBGYN has to put it in their computer and have you draw it here since I'm so far away. Hi. So that was like a week off. It was stupid. So anyway, so I they said I could schedule my sono histogram, though, for this month. No, what are you doing? Um, that way I could get that out of the way because it has to be done in the middle of your cycle. So I'm like, okay. So I go to the doctors yesterday, and I'll tell you what all the the RE said. Um, so I go to the doctor and making stuff stuff hot peppers. Yeah. So I go to the doctors yesterday for my first appointment there and have my annual and whatnot. So he puts all of, he puts my husband's blood work in, um, which I'll get to, and he put my blood work in and. Um, he said, well, we could probably do your son a histogram here. He's like, oh, I'll have time, you know, the sonographer, blah, blah, blah. Well, here, one of their sonographers just had a baby, and she's off. So they're down to one ultrasound tech, sonographer, whatever you want to call them. And so they have no openings, up, and I only have till day 21 to do it. They didn't have anything until the following week. So I was like, seriously? So now I have to drive to New Hampshire next week. Uh, two and a half hours down, two and a half hours back, and however long it takes to do it. Uh, I have to drive to New Hampshire to have the sauna done, but I was not going to wait until the next cycle. Um, so anyway, back to what the RE said. Uh, I talked to him last week. Basically, he sent me this whole list of, you know, blood work I have to have done on my next day three. And um, we also went over, like, probable protocol, but he doesn't know for sure until... Uh, he gets my labs back. Um, there was something in there that was a little confusing. Lupron, I know I made a video prior, wasn't even, he says that that's not common for their practice, even though it's listed on their website, so maybe they should take that down. Um, so Lupron, I told him it's not covered by my insurance. I don't want to take it. Um, I've read some things where people have lost twins. Uh, they attributed to that and things like that. Um, so I'm just kind of, I didn't want to take it. Plus, it's not covered by my insurance my prescription plan and I'm like I didn't take it last time so I did cover that with him and it doesn't seem like that's going to be an issue more than likely hundred I'm just not taking it flat out I'm telling him I'm not taking it I'm not paying for Lupron when I don't need it um so oh this pepper is gross um so he went over I have my little handy dandy book here so I don't ramble so he went over probable things. Okay, so this is where it got confusing. Um, I had some questions for him. Apparently they only do day five transfers. 
Uh, my old clinic, we did day three, which is how we got Noah. Um, apparently, I did not know this, um, male, the male's portion of the DNA does not kick in until day five, which must be why some of the embryos don't last till day five. If there's anything defective in the male's DNA, that embryo usually stops growing or dies off, I guess, by that point. So I know a lot of people do day five blasts. Makes me a little nervous because I know that your numbers do go down um, the longer, obviously, every day. I mean, we started with 20 eggs. We had 14 that were mature. We had 10 that fertilized. And by the end of this whole thing, we had seven embryos. Um, and actually, we only ended, one of them did not survive the thaw on our one frozen attempt. So, um, and we only got Noah. So we started with 20 eggs at retrieval, and Noah is the only survivor. So I know your numbers go down, which is what scares me. However, fingers crossed that with this protocol he's given me that maybe, I don't know. And with the fact that I'm taking all the different uh, vitamins, which I did not do leading up to the last fresh cycle we did. I think I just took a prenatal and I don't remember. I literally have to go back and look at um, all the videos. I'm trying to get all these seeds out of it. And it's curved. You can't get them out. Um, so anyway, the plan is the gonna left. Um, the gonal F and so we're doing day five and if we have two embryos, what I was getting at, if we have at least two blastocysts, we're going to transfer two because I'm over the age of 35. Um, so we're going to do gonal F, the Ovidrill. He said he, wanted, he preferred the, eight, the actual HCG, which I don't, I looked in the, because um, I can look up scripts and see what my copay will be. They don't even have that in there. And I think all of these are just the generic name for just HCG. I took the Ovidrill the first time and it was fine. So they'll cover Pregno, Ovidrill, or no Novarel. And I think they all do the same thing. Cetratide. Then um, he told me that I would be on estrogen until they f got a positive pregnancy test. I don't think I, I took estrogen with my frozen cycles. I did not take them uh, with my fresh cycle. So this is new. So that's something. And then also he said Menopure. He was going to do men, a mixture of Menopure and Gonal F. I don't know why. If anybody knows why, tell me. I don't know if it's um, my age, uh, better results, doing a mixture. I don't know. The first time I did this, I just did follow stim, just straight follow stim, and that was it. So I don't know. Fingers crossed. Um, and then he said also I'd probably do birth control pills the cycle before, which I think I did last time, but I'm not positive. I can't remember. The nice thing about that is you can kind of break it down into, if once you start your pill, you can kind of figure, if you're irregular, kind of like I am, you can kind of break it down into the week you should be transferring, I guess, kind of. He said that they do it an average of 8 to 10 stimulation days. I think I actually did more than that. I think I did 12, if I remember right. Um, and I was concerned about driving to New Hampshire all the time. He said I would only have to drive New Hampshire about four times during... Uh, stimulation. He says it's about every other day or every third day. And I was like, oh, thank God. So, um, but the trans the retrieval and the transfer will be done in Massachusetts. So that's a bigger drive. Uh, I asked about assisted hatching because of my age, which is the reason I think that uh, the frozen cycles did not work because they didn't offer it to us. And he said they do do it with frozen cycles. Um, he said he didn't think we would need it with fresh, but we would go from there. Um, hmm, let's see. And I think that's it as far as that conversation went um our prescriptions and i'm getting like a ton of stuff as long as they write it the way that it needs to be written through our insurance um will cost us about 250 dollars for everything so that's like amazing so today or yesterday when i had that appointment um i the problem is it's hard to explain I and mean, people are gonna think i'm crazy but I've been through this and I am not waiting till December to be driving three hours to Massachusetts from Maine, which is what cycle this would put me on if this is what happened. Okay, so I'm in the middle now. So I have a sauna histogram, then I'll do day three. So after you're finished with all your pre-testing, they make you do a follow-up and mine will be on the phone because I'm so far away. And they say it's about two weeks after. So that puts me in the middle of my next cycle. So then they do the protocol and all of that good stuff on that cycle. But if he wants me on birth control for a month, then I'd have to wait to the next cycle to start the birth control and then wait to the next one to start my stems. And I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. So I called. That's ridiculous. That puts me in December. We're in August. Like, that just seems insane to me. 
I, that should not take four months to start this process. So anyway, so I, I called them yesterday, yesterday or Monday. I don't know. I think it was two days ago. And I had, I had said, um, oh no, it was yesterday. It was yesterday when I was on my way to my OB appointment, OBGYM appointment. I said, can you call me in or can you prescribe me or send me, fax me, whatever you want to do. Uh, the birth control, that way I have it ready to go. After I do my day three blood work, I can start it. You usually start on day seven, I think, or eight, whatever. I don't know. I don't take birth control. I forget. But so after I, because you can't start it, do anything to your hormones until um, you have your day three blood work. I said, so I'll do my day three blood work and my ultrasound, and then I can start the birth control pills. That way I'm ready to go. After I talk to him, we're all set for the following cycle, which would be October. And they said, well, until we have a protocol for you, he won't do that. Or we won't do that, I guess. Well, at first she said, yeah, well, we can, but... And then she kind of backtracked and said they wouldn't do that. So, you know what? My OBGYN prescribed them for me because I knew which kind that I need to be on. And I am. when I talk to him, I will, I've already been on it for a week or two. And so there will be no reason for me to have to wait another cycle. So I kind of took it in my own hands and I'm... Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know, but I just think that's crap. They should call it in for you and then let you. It's not going to hurt. I mean, so she said, well, we don't do it for everybody. But yeah, typically they do do birth control for her. She's like, it's not a whole month. It's 14 to 21 days. And I'm like, 21 days is a full pack. That's a full month. Like, that's how many rows are in a birth control pack. So yes, that's a full month because then you're going to get a period and then you got to wait to stim up until day five. So I was not waiting. I'm in the middle of this one now, then I'd have to wait another one, then another one, and I'm not, mm -mm, no. So I did go get that filled, or he, he, he might have, crazy enough, I have no copay for that, and the, the um, price of it was like $42.99 for 21 pills. That is insane. That is insane. No wonder people on the street are having babies. Like, that's crazy for birth, like, pharmaceutical companies are insane, especially with all these IVF meds, so that's my little rant on that, but. Um, I was just not, I mean, you can tell me if I'm crazy or dislike this video. I don't care. I'm just telling you. I just think that's crap. And so did my OB, uh, uh, my doctor. He thought that was stupid too. Like, he's like, why don't they just call it in and have it on hand ready to go? You know, if I do my sauna histogram and there's a problem, then obviously I'm not going to start them, you know, with the next cycle. But why not have them on hand ready to go? Because I can't get an, after my day three blood work, I can't get an, they told me he has to, to make an appointment two weeks after that. For him to have time to review. Okay, so you just wasted a whole cycle of mine, which I get, that's fine. But you're gonna waste the whole cycle with, yeah, it's a treat. You're gonna waste the whole cycle of mine for no reason. Just give me the stupid pill. You prescribe it to everybody, almost everybody anyway, so just give it to me. And then if there's an issue, then just give me another pack for the next month. You know? Whoop de doo. No big deal. People take birth controls every day. So, I don't know. So I'm just going to start taking it, and whenever he calls me and says, well, oh, no, be nice, be nice. Um, he's playing with Molly. So when he calls me and he's like, all right, well, we're going to start you on the pill for next month. And I'm like, well, I've already been taking it, so I'm ready to go for the next cycle. Like, they don't, they, I, I mean, I understand that they, they have their reasons and stuff, but that's rude to make somebody wait a whole extra cycle you know, I'm not new to this. It's not my first time. I know how this goes. And the fact that I have to drive three hours several times, and we live in the tip <laughs> of where all the snow is, and you're going to make me drive. Isabel's not home, honey. She's at school. Oh, Come here, baby. Come say hi. But I'm not driving. Oh, you can put your hat on. He, he loves his hat. Good job. Oh, there you go. I think he fixed it. Um, so I don't know. I may be a jerk and I may be insane. So that's how that went. Um, so nothing too exciting. A week from yesterday will be, I got to drive to New Hampshire to have the sauna done, which I'm not looking forward to, but at least that'll be done and out of the way. And then all I have to do is an ultrasound and day three blood work, which concerns me because apparently their ultrasound tech here fills up so freaking quick. I don't know when my day three is. I don't know when that's going to be. Like, it's, I'm not, like, perfect. So, I, 
I hope I can get in. If not, I'm going to have to drive to New Hampshire again for just a baseline ultrasound. So, oh, he wants to go get her from school. <laughs> so, yeah, so I might be crazy. So, no Lupron. However, if anybody knows, is the Metapure mixture like the new thing? I don't know. I didn't do that last time. So, but yeah, so I think that's about it. Belle started school. She looked amazing. I don't right now. Actually, my video yesterday looked a lot better. I should have just kept that one. And that's about it. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'll probably update next Wednesday after my son Instagram, and we'll see if anything's found out from since then. And I think they ordered me Sprint Tech, but I think it's the generic. Um, but I'm almost positive this is what I was on before. And whenever we didn't think of an IDF ever again, I literally threw away every, all the paperwork. Because I was like, I'm not going to need this. It was kind of depressing. Because we tried twice after we had Noah to have more. And so I didn't want it hanging around my name that it didn't work. So I threw everything out. And I wish I kept it now because it had everything in it. Like, <laughs> literally everything. So now I can't get this thing open. But it says... Oh, orthocycline. All right, whatever. It was supposed to be Sprintech, I think, but I don't think it matters. I think I don't even know why they do this. I think it's just to calm your ovaries the month prior, if that makes any sense. And I literally, this thing will not open. It will not open. Um, and you put three refills on it. I don't know why. Oh, press. Wait. It says press. Why would I press? Oh my god. I was just like prying and prying and prying. You just press on it and it pops open. <laughs> I wonder if they do that for so the kids don't. So yeah. So it's like that. But yay, pills. Um alright, so that's about it. And uh, yeah, let me know if anybody else has done the menopure thing and how it worked out for you. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.